Question 16 says a satellite has a mass of 99 kilograms and is located 2.05 times 10 to the 6 meters above the Earth. A. What is the potential energy associated with the satellite at this location? And B. What is the magnitude of the gravitational force of the satellite? So here we're going to use the new equation that we got for potential energy, which says that potential energy is equal to the, the negative gravitational constant times the, the mass 1 times mass 2 divided by the radius. And so basically what we have here is, is um, the, so if you, if you think of uh, force equals mass times acceleration, and if you were to, to divide by, or, or rather, rather times it by the height, that gives you the, the work. So the, the force times the distance equals, equals work, and so that's what potential energy is. It's, it's the potential work that can be done. And so when you times it by, when you times the, gra the equation for gravity, so gravity uh, times m1, m2 over r squared, well, the, the, you times that by, by the height, then what you get is timesing it by r, and so it just cancels out one of the r's, and so this is potential energy. So you just plug in your, your numbers, so you have negative in the gravitational constant 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th, and you multiply that by the mass of the satellite, so, so 99 times the mass of the Earth, which is uh, 5.9, we're, we're going to say 5.97 times 10 to the 24th, so 5.97 and I'm just going to uh, leave out the 10, just write 24. That's 10 to the 24th. And the radius in this case was, uh, we have to take the height plus the radius of the Earth. So, so the height plus the radius of the Earth. And the height that it gave us was uh, 2.05, 2.05 times 10, and so anyhow, this has to be squared. Make sure you square that. So the height was 2.05 times 10 to the sixth meters. So you got to add that to the radius of the Earth, which the radius of the Earth is six, uh, 600. Um, I'm sorry, it's 6,371,000 meters, or about 6,371 kilometers. So you add that together. So the sum of this is 8,421,000. So 8,421,000. And you still have to square that number. And the square, when you square it, it is 7.09. Um, we're just going to abbreviate it at that, times 10 to the 13th. So this is the bottom of our fraction right here. And then the top of our fraction, so we had 99 times um, times 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. And so when you multiply all of that and you put it over over our, our 709 times 10 to the 13th, 7.09 times 10 to the 13th, the, the answer you get is 8.09. 33, we'll say 8.335 times 10 to the 12th. And then you still have to multiply this by the gravitational constant, which is uh, 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11th. So you multiply that together, and you should get a number of 556. Is 556 newtons, and so this is the gravitational force acting. Well, that's actually, we answered B first. Um, to, we, B was uh, the force, and A was the the potential energy. And so I actually switched in the middle there. So the potential energy negative G times times m1 m2 over r. And uh, what we just did was negative g times m1 m2 over r squared. So all we have to do now is divide by, or I'm sorry, not divide, but rather multiply by the radius. So, so because um, we did this one, if we multiplied that by the radius, it would actually cancel out one of the r's, and it would just leave r. So to find the potential energy, all we have to do is, is multiply our, our force of 5, 556, 556 times the radius that we had, 
which we said was we said the radius was eight million four hundred and twenty one thousand meters and so we multiply those together and it will give us of course it has to be negative we have to throw in a negative in there and it will give us our potential energy of uh, negative four hundred and four I'm just gonna write, say the numbers because it's so long negative four six nine one three zero six eight zero four joules so negative joules is the potential energy